one speaker uh, who sadly is sick, so she couldn't make it. So yeah, please feel free to start in this beamerless. Right. Uh, thanks, Kuga. So the, the, the back story about this talk is I have a session, or maybe for an introduction, I'm Johannes Schlüter. Until last week, I was release manager for PHP 5.3, which now released its end of life, and it's dead, and it's gone, and I hope nobody, nobody of you is using PHP 5.3 or older anymore. And I hope you're all excited about PHP 5.6. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. Um, and I do different talks. For some time, I did all the PHP 5.3 talks. And then the topic became boring, and new versions came out. And I had a talk um, about um, PHP under the hood, explaining some things about how PHP works, how reference counting works in PHP. And then there was some work done by a company called Zend to, to improve PHP's performance by massively changing the internals of PHP. So if I give this talk nowadays, it doesn't really apply for the future, and we know it won't apply what I'm, going to t what I'm talking about in that talk. Then this, for this, this year's co um, Frostcon conference, they were looking for, for more technical talks, more experimental talks to not the default, oh, it's just web scripting talks, but in-depth talk. And Core and I chatted shortly about it, uh, whether something like that might work out, talking about PHP under the hood or PHP NG at this conference. But back, back in the times, I didn't really feel comfortable talking about PHP NG, since it was quite new, just announced by uh, Send that they are going to do it. It wasn't clear whether it will be merged into PHP and so on. And so that slowed down again. I kept it in my, the back of my head, but they didn't really prepare any talk about it yet. And then yesterday, I was noticed that talk, uh, the speaker was ill, and I said, well, yeah, let's try it. And therefore, I don't have any slides or anything. So in the in this PHP under the hood talk, what I'm talking about is what I'm trying to teach people is that references are bad. I assume everybody of you is knowing what PHP references are. So you have your um, variable, um, and it's dollar b. I hope you can roughly as, um, understand those are dollar signs. My handwriting is bad, and it's even worse on, on the whiteboard. Um, and if you do this, this ampersand syntax, you get a full um, alias. So dollar a and dollar b directly refer to the same thing in memory. The thing in memory we are having is called a Z-Val, which is a send value derived from previous PHP three times, so it was called PHP value, but then the proper or better engine, send engine came along and the name was changed to, to, to Z-Val to represent that. And a Z-Val is a quite complex um, structure. I won't write it in complete here. But it's a C structure. Um, let's take a shortcut. It's an angle bracket. And we have multiple fields in there. One is an integer about a ref count. And an integer for uh, is ref, telling us uh, how many of those variables are pointing to a specific variable. So after this line is executed, we have one of these data structures in memory. And we are having uh, the ref count of two, since dollar $a and dollar $b are showing on it. And as we have true aliases, we set this is ref flag to the value of one to tell us, OK, it's a value. Um, we have more data in here. The important part is a union. Um, value, it should work on my handwriting next time, um, which has some different fields like integer for uh, long value, value, and uh, another struct, struct, I should go there, uh, <laughs> um, for, for a string value, so it's a char pointer and an int for the length, and some other things for, for other types I wrote. Uh, it's not complete, it shouldn't be there. Um, and 
So all, all different types we're having in PHP are represented in this data structure. And, we're, and a union in C is a data type where basically the maximum value for the maximum type is allocated in memory. And uh, depending on how you access it, it's interpreted in the according way. So the, the largest data type we're having in here is a char pointer and an integer for a string and a length. And so the, the size of the union will be the size of the char pointer, uh, which is depending on your system, 32 bits, 64 bits, and the size of an integer. It's an integer, so yes, um, uh, which might be 32 bits or something like that. And then we have these additional fields, and they are kept here in memory. And then we have an additional field called um, type. I don't, I'm not sure whether it's, it's the correct name, but that's basically the, the uh, set row structure. So that we keep for every of our, you're taking a photo of my bad handwriting. <laughs> um, um, and there we keep all the data in memory. Now we're having an issue when doing it this way. Um, that's the way how we reference to it. Since it's nice that we're having one container for those variables, but we need to point somewhere from these variables to this uh, reference. And for that we have a data structure which is a hash table. From memory perspective, we can simplify our hash table and assume it's, a, it's an C array. Um, it's not exactly true, but um, it's the closest we can get to it. And if we look at, an, at a computer uh, for Neumann architecture, what we are typically using these days, in not exactly the form it is, or anybody here has seen a lecture about uh, computer science 101 or uh, Grundlagen der Informatik in German, a few studied people, okay, then that shouldn't be new to anybody of you. In a, for Neumann architecture, you have your memory with different with slots of the same size, and they are all addressable with sequential numbers, so that's address one, address two, address three, and so on. And we have somewhere an end uh, with some other numbers. Yeah, it happens. Pens don't like me, and I don't like pens. But you, so we have this memory layout where we can address the different areas. Now, if we're having an array for our values, uh, we place it in here, something like that. And we have three pointers here. Um, that's not exactly what it is, but we can assume it, um, pointing us to our um, structure, which are in some other memory address. So that's maybe here. And then we have a pointer pointing there. And we have a second pointer pointing there too. So when accessing a variable, the PHP engine has to go first, or the, the, the system has to fetch that memory first, and then dereference the pointer and go here to fetch the actual data. So there's an indirection step. Now we have these things called CPUs. We're going deeper. <laughs> If memory rust wasn't enough for you, uh, we have our CPU, as you can clearly see. And the CPU, one key component is the uh, arithmetic uh, computation unit, ACU, is that correct? ALU, ALU logic unit, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but um, that, that unit doing actually the, the math in the, in the computer. Uh, then um, you have your registers here. Uh, which are very small places of data, basically can take the word size, so 32 bits or 64 bits or something like data, in one of those registers directly in the CPU. Then you have your L1 cache, your L2 cache, your L3 cache, depending on your CPU. If you're looking at memory now, uh, we know RAM sizes are in the gigabytes, I think. I don't know what a typical server for you has, some quite few gigabytes, but if we're looking at here in the CPU level, uh, we're talking about something like five megabytes 
or three megabytes or something like that, depending on your system's architecture, your specific CPU. And it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and here we are really at, at word size level. Now we have the second issue here, that it takes time to get from here to here, or data from there to there. Our limiting fa factor there is, or the, the absolute limiting factor, it's not the only one, is called speed of light. Speed of light is, who knows it, how many kilometers per second? 300,000, 299 or something like that. Um, so then we have three gigahertz as a CPU frequency, um, which means in the time of one CPU cycle, the information can travel at most. Who can do the multiplication? Um, it's, it's nine centimeters. Oh, depending, so 300,000 times the gigahertz, um, 8.9 is what I calculated yesterday. Um, so the maximum distance our information can travel within one CPU cycle is, uh, what did I say, nine centimeters or something like that. And it has to go back and forth. And if you're looking at our main board, we see hmm, we are a bit over that. So we are wasting CPU cycles while waiting for the memory. In real life numbers, just to give you an impression about what's happening here. Um, rough estimates, I found those numbers on the internet, so they must be true <laughs> um, by definition. Accessing RAM, we can estimate about 100 nanoseconds. Accessing, uh, I only have L2 cache, but it doesn't matter too much, it's seven nanoseconds. And L10.5 nanoseconds and accessing registers at, at more or less immediately. So by having to go to memory to access the data, we go from seven nanoseconds for data we have already cached here to 100 nanoseconds, which is a lot more. Um, of course, it's nothing if you look at it, but if you then think about, again, you have three gigahertz as um, frequency, and you're waiting for 100 nanoseconds for, for your data to process. It's quite some time you have to wait. And the CPU basically has nothing to do with it. So to improve this, um, the, the system, the CPU, on one side and the compiler and everybody is trying to help by not reading the, the single data packet here, but trying to read more of it at once and trying to put it in the caches. So we are not reading only this, but maybe if you're only accessing the delay, the CPU predicts that we're going to read this and put it at least an L3 cache if there's enough space. That, that gives a huge improvement in the, in the performance here, but um, we still, but the CPU can't predict that we're going to make this jump and going to access that memory in most circumstances. Depending on your CPU, depending on your compiler, that might look different, but uh, in general, uh, it's hard for the CPU to do. Now, we have to state a structure with this indirection here. And we want those references. And we have this issue. What, what can we do? We can change this behavior, and we can change these, these hash tables. Um, when I thought about it, I thought about doing it next to each other, but I have to switch. So um, what the sand guys came up with was redefining the, the, the hash table, that inside the hash table, you're not actually uh, storing the pointer, pointing there, but the actual value. So when we're drawing our memory again, da, 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 we have, I have to switch colors just to make that a bit more practical. We have our, that's now one entry for our hash table. So that's, um, all of that is dollar A. And inside there, directly, 
I don't have a value, but let's assume I have a value of uh, 23 for that. We have some meta information and we have the actual value of 23, right, in that data structure. And if we are now having an array of data, the next element is directly next to it. And, um, yeah, let's, let's say dollar $B, which already shows a small issue we're having. Um, and that has some data. I'm not going into details right now. So what we're having here is, in, in the old version, Wait, wait. I'm uh, coming exactly there. Okay. Um, so in this, in this old case here, we had inside this um, hash table with some metadata and so on, a reference to the actual data. And we could simply reuse this. Um, in my uh, old talk, I mentioned before, the main message was uh, don't use references. Since um, doing this prevents an optimization inside the, the PHP engine, which tries to do copy on write. Um, when we are not having um, a reference here but copies and we don't change it, the picture here will be exactly the same. Only difference is that we are not marking it as references in the data structure here. But this stays the same. And if you have one reference and one copy, um, you can't reuse the container, but you need a second container to either hold the reference value or the copied value. And that's why references are bad, but that's another topic, a talk you can look at that with slides and everything uh, on YouTube. If you, if you search for Johannes Schluter PHP under the hood, uh, there's a version from PHP UK conference about that. Now, as you directly so, uh, when we're needing a reference, uh, I need only this one, and we are directly storing the value inside the actual data structure here, um, this doesn't work out that way. That's why there's more complication to it. What, what they already also did is, I should have put it next to each other, I should have thought about it more. Um, changing the, the set world structure to um, a structure where you have type and you have a union and I think one more field which I don't remember right now but it doesn't really matter. And now the type here, oh let's, let's take the other way around. The type flag in here directly represents um, the type you're seeing in PHP. If you're looking at the variable, it has a type of an integer or long, which is the same in PHP speak. It has the type of a string, it has the type of an array, it has the type of something like that. That's a numeric value. You have this is constants, I think, exported to PHP userland, and the same ones are used here. In the new one, we have more types here. We have specific types saying it's long. We have specific types, specific type flag here saying it's a string, and we have a specific type here saying it's a reference type. And if we say it's a reference type, then basically this happens again, but with more memory usage, since this data structure is a bit, or that data structure is a bit big, bigger. Um, and then we have this indirection again, but if we don't need an indirection for references, we can directly inline um, the um, data inside the hash table. Now, the next op um, optimization this brings, or oh, is that so far clear? Um, the next op optimization this brings by having those um, values next to each other in memory is again, if you're looking at our different cache layers here, um, uh, often operation we're doing is some form of iteration over the data when, when searching for something, when looking in an array, when doing a for each on an array or something like that. By directly having the data next to each other, the CPU can take more of the memory at once, closer to its core, to 
for its calculation units. And um, without going back and forth all the time between different memory areas, then jumping somewhere else, and keeping in mind that those are really small, uh, it's quite nice to have those data really compact, close to each other, everything. Now, there's another effect we're having here, um, which brings us back to our nice Mr. von Neumann architecture. Uh, oh, just to, just to for, for for more or less informational purpose, if you're reading data from an SSD drive, I just put, um, put some more numbers out just for giving a feeling what happens. Uh, we are at uh, 150,000 uh, nanoseconds, roughly for just the SSD access. Um, and didn't I have something about hard disk? Uh, so one megabyte, megabyte reading from a spinning hard disk drive, one MB is 10 million nanoseconds. Um, and that's what I have right here at about numbers. So it's a huge gap if you're going to that kind of memory, just to give an impression of these numbers. So um, now another thing is, if we're handling these variables in this old way, we have quite some common cases where we need tempor temporary values. Uh, if, you have an, if you have a calculation, uh, is this one working? One plus two plus three and equals dollar C. Uh, and as long as we don't optimize it, we need a temporary variable here and then copy that and then reference it again for that variable. And for all of that, we have to go to memory and find some space where we can put it. And basically, we have two choices when accessing memory from from system perspective. One is uh, putting it in heap memory, which basically means uh, give me some memory area here and uh, reserve it for me so I can put data in and take data out. That takes some quite some time on a system. Uh, speaking about uh, in those magnitudes of time. The, the other approach is, again, looking at our von Neumann architecture and our nice things we're having here, um, is our stack. So we have one register, which is a stack pointer. And the stack, um, which is in Germany nicely also called sometimes Kellerspeicher, so cellar memory, uh, is at the bottom of our memory. So we have address one, and we have the maximum memory here. And when our program starts, the stack pointer points here. In, uh, points here. So uh, this register has the address of that one. And each time the a function is called on, on system level, so a C function from the PHP implementation, somewhere annotated to that function is the information how much stack memory it's using. And it's simply changing this value accordingly, increasing by the needed space, and then the the pointer shows here, and the function can use the, the space it needs. And that's a really fast way to, to access memory. Since all for allocation on a function call, uh, you change that value, and when you leave the function, you change it the other way around. Unless you're using C++ with destructors or something like that, um, it's really, really a fast operation. Okay, um, I had some thought on my mind, but I forgot it. Anyways, <laughs> I'm improvising, as you might have noticed. <laughs> uh, the data stored in here, and now we don't have this overhead of putting data. Uh, my thought was, um, you yeah, know the typical issue of, about the PHP program, uh, function foo calls function foo 
And uh, we all know what happens on PHP. We get a segmentation fault due to your stack overflow. What happens is we're calling function after function after function. So this one grows, 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 moves up, moves up. And in some area, the operating system has a limit and says uh, max stack space for this process is here, or for this thread, actually, not process. And if we reach that limit, the operating system, or actually the CPU, which knows this limit, uh, will signal the operating system, which will signal the application. Um, sorry, no more stack space, and uh, goodbye, process. And you get a segmentation fault. And detecting this in an incompatible way is something we don't do from PHP level, so you get a segmentation fault. So that's the reason for this one. Now, if we are having our temporary variables, and we are putting, taking this indirection out, um, we can directly put the temporary variable here in our stack, put it there, keep it there, and if we need it, we copy it, if we need it somewhere else. Um, so when the function ex exits, and we still need a value, we have to copy it out. Otherwise, we can forget about it, and it's gone from, um, well, it's still in memory, but in an area not accessible by anybody. And that's the second optimization we're having in PHP for the general purpose case. And these changes in data structures lead to numbers. I don't know that anybody knows how much the factor is from you, well-informed people, uh, something like, uh, one third of the performance improvement over PHP 5 for this PHP upcoming version, which nowadays has a version number 7. And mostly due really to changing those data structures. While there's another change in the data structure, um, for instance, if you take Boolean values, currently in this implementation, we have a flag saying it's a Boolean variable and then additional field for the value, they are now combined in one. So basically, a true and a false are treated like they were uh, types, not like values. So we need one lookup to access if it's a true variable or it's a false variable, and not two lookups. And some more of those small improvements in there. Now, what's, what can we else do with this information? What's the time, by the way? So how much time? Okay. Almost half time only. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> it's the last talk. And party time is coming up. <laughs> um, but but what, was, what, was, what, was, what, was, what did I just say? All right. Okay, so the, the initial issue which led to really changing these data structures was that Dimitri, who's the guy from Zend, who's really in depth about doing all those optimizations and thinking about those. Um, wanted to do some just-in-time compiling, compilation of, of PHP code into native code to have even more uh, performance impact. And when doing this, he figured out that this indirection kills every optimization since we can't really predict what will happen. Uh, with this model, there's a chance that we're not only seeing this improved data structures, which result in overall less memory usage and higher performance since access times become really slow. Um, but that we can, that the step towards just in time compilation, since with the values directly telling us the type, we can be surer about this and therefore give it to the JIT engine to say, it's that type, go with it, optimize it, make native code out of it. And yes. Yeah. Well, the, the question is, uh, this 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 become way more complex if you look at it. If you really look at the code. Uh, it's more complex than what we had in the past. So it's not a simplification, but it uh, makes it more complex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but from a user perspective, it's, it's faster, it's more efficient. And you, if you're using PHP, you don't see anything of that. You see uh, that. <laughs> um, 
And, but it's the first step towards JIT compilation. And there was a recent post by Dimitri um, starting a heated debate about one of everybody's favorite topic, uh, static type hinting for scalar types. Mm -hmm. Since you really figured out, if we know in the declaration of our function we having this type, we can so much better do so much better JIT implementations. And after reading that statement, I thought, damn, he's quite close to having a JIT. <laughs> I don't know any details about what he's really and how close he is, but from that posting, it sounded like there might be a chance that next week or something he's coming up with a new idea for, for a JIT uh, implementation, bringing again some huge performance improvements. The other thing in, in, in meantime, Dimitri did, he's, I never met him, but I really like uh, what he does, since he's really no big time about discussing, but delivering and improving things for, for quite some time in PHP. Um, we, even, even with that model, we have to allocate quite some memory on the heap or free memory or whatever you want to call that area, not the stack area um, of, of the memory. And operating systems typically are optimized that you start them at some time, allocate quite huge blocks of memory, keep them for, in computer speak, long time, and then free them again and do something else. What you're doing in a PHP script is you need these relatively small data blocks all the time. You need a new variable, you free it, you need a next variable, a new temporary table, gives quite a lot of um, of uh, memory allocation operations and memory allocating, finding good spot that you're not wasting too much memory and keeping it close to each other and keeping that whole thing when multiple processes are running at the same time takes huge amount of time. And so we have an optimized memory manager already in PHP, which knows, okay, I'm having quite a lot of data with this size and pre-allocates slots for that and reuses them and manages those. And what they, what Dimitri, I haven't looked deeper into that implementation yet, announced I think last week or maybe the week before, it was a new memory manager. So he's not only working on changing the data structures, introducing a JIT engine, but also uh, while edit, uh, writing a new memory manager. And again, improving performance of PHP quite a lot. So, um, now there was quite some fuss in the, in the PHP community related to this work. Now we're getting into politics <laughs> or kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I won't read internal postings. So, um, there's an operating system in the world uh, which is called, uh, what's the name, uh, not doors, not gates, windows, that's it. Um, <laughs> and some people use that system and there's a company in Redmond which really pushes that operating system and tries to, to sell it. I don't know why they are doing it, but they are doing it. Oh, this is recorded, isn't it? Damn. <laughs> Not serious, it's, I'm, I'm just, um, and, and what they are working on is they try to, to unify the experience, making it more portable that PHP scripts on different systems and different platforms behave the same way. And now we're having one thing in PHP, uh, which actually is an error here, now that I see it. Uh, that side. Uh, this one is the, the long value is actually of type long. And the, the property of this type long is from the C standard, it's not clear what size long should be, which leads to different um, interpretations. In the Unix world, long is interpreted as if you were running on a 32-bit system, being of size 32, if you're running on a 64-bit system, it's size 64-bit. On the Windows operating system, it's defined to be already 32-bit, just to make porting code easier. 
on Windows <laughs> from 32 to 64 bit. Um, I don't know about Windows, and I don't really. It's they, the the point is there's this difference on the one side between Linux, uh, Unix machines themselves, if you're running 32 bit and 64 bit, and um, with Windows machines, which then behave differently again. And what many people want from a scripting language is it behaves the same on all platforms. And those guys from from Microsoft also figured out that we are using the int type here to, to represent the length of the string. If you look closer to C standard and recommended programming guides, you see that int isn't the size one should take, but one should take the type called size t. Mm. And so they, they spent quite some time in an, in an open process by early on telling everybody we're doing this and we want to do this uh, to change those types to make sure that on all platforms, independently, whether it's Unix, 32-bit, um, Unix, when talk, saying Unix, I include Linux, which is near Unix, other religious discussion. Um, I'm, I'm working for a true Unix vendor, by the way. Uh, um, to always be 64-bit on all machines, on all systems everywhere. And to have this type on a proper type, so size T or uh, long size T, S, S, S size T, just to be 64 bit all the time. So, independently of your system, um, it behaves the same uh, with high integers and so on, and long strings. I don't know if every, anybody needs strings longer than two gigabytes in memory, but if you do with PHP, it should behave the same on all platforms. That's the idea. And it's a huge change in PHP to change that. And they announced that they're doing this. They were doing this publicly in PHP Skit repository in a specific additional branch, which was directly next to the main PHP branch. And suddenly, the send people came and said, well, we changed all the data structures. We worked hard on reducing memory usage. And uh, we want to push that. And we didn't communicate without, with you beforehand, uh, since it was an experiment, <clears throat> and we didn't know whether it would work out and, or not. And we don't want to send out all, all the ideas we're having all the time, since that's too much, since they're really actually working continuously for years on different ideas how to optimize PHP. And 90% of that is thrown away, since it doesn't work out. That idea about changing the data types and so on, that seem to have worked out. We don't have major bugs yet. Maybe you find them if you, if you test what's now called PHP 7 from PHP repositories and test it with the applications. You might find bugs, but we don't know major bugs yet. Mm, and we want to push it. Now, this change here increases data usage. You need more memory if you're always having 64 bits here. You're using more memory if you're not using a small integer type here, but a large integer type, which is kind of opposite. Now you have the one company pushing it really hard to get their change in, since it's a huge impro improvement for PHP, and they are saying that's what people are interested in. People want performance. And you have the other guy who's working for, for, for big Microsoft with other guys helping him, doing open source, open development from Microsoft, and doing this change. And they are more or less beaten down. I'm defending Pierre, by the way. Uh, <laughs> new feeling, but happens. <laughs> um, and the same guy is saying, yeah, increasing memory usage and performance is the most important part. And they are saying, well, we need a consistent behavior, and we need better APIs internally, better types internally, um, and not ugly types, which that partly has internally. It's a more complex structure, needing more different operations and different types. And so there was a huge debate. In the end, uh, they, they worked together silently and uh, recently uh, put this work on top of that work, and even in a way, 
uh, that in some cases you even get more performance out of it. <laughs> so out of the, oh yes, so slow, they, they figured out if you're if you doing it, if you're working, cooperating, um, we get something which is even better. We fulfill more or less both needs from both sides and um, putting stuff on top of it. And let me think, is there anything else on that level in, in the future of PHP? I don't think so. So um, if everything goes well, everything I talked about will be released as PHP 7. Um, now the debate is whether we will have a 5.7 release in between or not. Um, from my personal opinion, um, I think we should focus on getting that one out. And if we figure out, oh, we can't do it, and we can do an immediate release. But if we say, oh, we can't do this, and we can't do it in a year, then we do some other stuff and implement other features which are piling up. People want to have uh, big int support. So you can have integers higher than 64-bit. Um, or that kind of stuff, and uh, pushing for those changes, and then you get a 5.7, and then nobody has worked on that since the 5.7 got the priority, and then you figure out, oh, it will take so much more time until we have PHP 7 ready, so let's make a 5.8, and a 5.9, and a 5.10, and then, then we do the same what we did with PHP 6, and we kill PHP 7, and then we get to PHP 8. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and so my opinion is we should try to push PHP 7. So we should demand, or you should demand from the PHP developers, give us PHP 7 next year. And you should do your part in testing um, the, the Git repository snapshots of PHP 7 and try where it breaks with your code base early. Since, since the earlier you report issues you're seeing, the earlier it can be fixed and the earlier it can be released. And that's mostly I can think of right now under the subject. If you have any questions related to that or any other questions, feel free to ask them and maybe I'll answer them. And otherwise, if you don't have questions, uh, there's beer and uh, barbecue and stuff outside, I think. Or maybe inside. Not sure, and not sure it stops now. Oh, damn, so yeah, I need questions, so please, please, please ask questions. Yes? They are huge. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I just had to make the joke first. Uh, so the, the question was about in, um, how much it affects extension developers. Since there are people do, building quite impressive work on top of the PHP API to make it usable with a proper programming language called C++, um, which really makes some things easier. And it's, it's an issue since, um, so we have a migration guy telling you some of the things, but every place you're working with hash tables you have to change basically, and some of the type usage you have to change. And that's it for, for a typical um, extension. You might, to some degree, automate it. Basically, when you have a set while star star, take a star away. Um, <laughs> um, keep the same macros. If you're using the is Boolean macro, I think you have to change it. If you're using arrays, you have to slightly change those since there's a different type. Oh, and strings have been changed. They are now of type send string and not char pointer anymore. Uh, and a new string API, and then this change and this change and this change. But there's on the on the wiki PHP net um, somewhere there's a migration guide. Um, just go to go to RFCs, then go to PHP and G, and on the bottom third uh, of the RFC it's linked the migration guide <laughs> for extension authors, which then also links to the uh, by the way to the internals of of PHP and G. So it's not on the RFC, but you have to go to the migration guide to get to the internals. And there you can find the information. But it's, it's notable work to, to adopt to it. Other questions? Or if that's not enough, then? Well, the, the, the current set of extensions that exist, although there must be hundreds of extensions, mm -hmm. they will operate. Yes. 
all extensions will break and all extensions have to be adopted. And how much of the extensions are we managed by the PHP team? Um, I don't know how much, so, so the question is how many extensions are managed by the PHP team and as, it, as every extension basically has to be touched to be adopted to, to this new world. Um, the number of extensions, I don't know, since there are many, many internal only company specific extensions. Then there are tons of unmaintained and unused open source extensions in Pickle, in the PHP extension repository, pickle.php.net. And then there's a number of used ones. And out of this used ones, there might be some which are worse maintained and some which are better maintained. So if you're looking at a common extension, something like Xdebug, which isn't part of the PHP distribution, but is very well maintained. That will be adopted quickly. If you're looking at some extension like like the memcache extension in in the Pickle repository or memcached, they are a bit less maintained, but I guess they are important enough that somebody will work on it. And if you're then going to even less used ones, um, it might take some time or uh, your time. Um, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a, it's a so the, the the interesting point if is if you have in more or less simple PHP extensions, more or less wrapping only a C library, and not doing any object oriented stuff, it's very little work to no work to get them from from PHP 4.0 to PHP 5.6. The the incompatibilities are quite small there, um, less than an hour of work, pure, pure work without uh, all integration testing and what you could do. Um, so it's, there aren't many changes and what the changes there are are kept in quite small areas. Now this is a huge change and this will really kill some really old extensions nobody should use anyway since they aren't maintained obviously, as uh, so they will hopefully be adopted. Since I think the, the performance improvements, the memory improvements, the springs are so much that the community will cry. More than they will cry about uh, some new syntax, syntactic sugar. Uh, I don't know what the latest syntactic sugar is which is being introduced. I don't follow the syntactic sugar. Yeah. And they build on a certain round. Right. Most, mostly, it's uh, mostly they are into like core core components. Uh, and, uh, yeah. We so have some requests for zip and HTTP and other actual Yeah. So okay. So HTTP extensions and good example that might probably become part of the core oh, distribution. Core, yeah. um, and the other extensions you mentioned are part of the core distribution. So yeah. either they are thrown out. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine that some crappy stuff we're having in there which nobody is using actually might throw might be thrown out in the process. I don't know. Some of the unmaintained PDO extensions. I won't comment on that since uh, MySQL is the only database you should use anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paid for saying that. Um, so I won't. So I won't comment on throwing out other databases. Uh, but yeah, in in fact, that was an area I was thinking about. Some uh, some IBM DB2 PDO driver, which is broken anyways, and where nobody from the PHP developers can commit, since the IBM lawyers don't like that. Um, su such things might be thrown out. Um, so most of that work is done by Zend, which is mostly Dimitri, and they hired two guys more or less for that. Not, I, I don't know if they hired them full time or no, just. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know the the, the contractual details, there. but so they they they. they sponsored at least work from two other guys. One is 
called uh, calls himself Laroons, which is a typo from Larence. And he's a Chinese guy. Um, he recently got into the PHP core community and is also a great guy from from technical perspective. He is a bit shy about communicating since he feels his English isn't good enough, but uh, that's the same for, for most of the contributors, which makes it a bit hard sometimes to, to, to discuss. But um, he's a great guy and does, does lots of work. And Nikita, who is also quite into these things, and um, sent us sponsoring that. But I don't know how the relationship, who does what, and so on is. Um, and I don't care. Um, I don't care who is paying whom for, for working on PHP for the most, most part of it, unless uh, for stupid comments. So there was a question? Are they making sure that these two developers have a share of playing together? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the question is uh, about our, our bus factor uh, solution issue. So bus factor means having an important uh, developer being run over by a bus. And what happens to the project? And well, you have Dimitri. I think he's still living somewhere in Russia. You have Laroons in in China and Nikita somewhere in Europe. And I have a hard time imagining a situation where they they travel from one location to the exact same location. They might probably go all to to maybe send cons send paste them, and once there are guys there. Um, and they might share a flight from Frankfurt or some other European hub. And I don't know if Send has any precautions uh, of an accident happening there. Um, I'm not so much into the disaster recovery stories from that. I know it from other companies, but <laughs> not for Barbecue has been opened, so um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're running out now, I get the impression that you don't like me. I prefer food and alcohol over me. Yeah. Alternatively, I was so bad that you need to get drunk, become drunk, and um, anyway, thanks. Thank you.